I thought USB-C was simple, but it might actually be one of the most underrated inventions in modern technology. Remember when every device needed a different cable? A charger for your phone, another for your camera, a giant brick for your laptop, and that one weird proprietary cable that you left in your drawer for the last 15 years. Half your cables carry power, some carry data, some even carry video. But none of them actually talk to each other. It was like tech companies were allergic to standardization. USB-C came and pretty much fixed all of that. But what most people don't realize is how unbelievably smart this tiny little port actually is. Because the story of USB-C doesn't actually start with USB-C. It starts almost 30 years earlier. See, the USB standard began in the mid 90s. Seven companies teamed up together. We had Intel, Microsoft, IBM, Compaq, DEC, NEC, Nortel, led in part by Intel engineer AJ Bat, which I apologize if I'm pronouncing wrong. AJ Bat was a key architect often called the father of USB. He helped build the original USB standard, the one that replaced serial ports and PS2 ports. And no, not the Sony PS2. I mean the purple and green keyboard ports on the back of your motherboard, which you probably haven't touched in your last five computers. USB made all that disappear over the next few years. Then the 2000s happened. Digital cameras exploded, MP3 players exploded, phones exploded, and suddenly everyone just needed smaller, faster connectors. So manufacturers just improvised. When a port was too slow, instead of replacing it, they mutated it. It was like engineers collectively said, we must construct additional pylons. And boom, proprietary cables out the wall zoo. And the cable ecosystem started looking like it was held together by duct tape. Dozens of shapes, zero compatibility, and no long-term plan. So in early 2010, USB Implementers Forum started designing a completely new connector. Not an upgrade, but a complete reset of the chaos. It had to be reversible, small enough for phones, power enough for laptops, fast enough for the next decade, and flexible enough to replace every single port we've ever came up with. That design became USB-C. USB-C officially launched in 2014, but when Apple released a laptop with one single USB port, People absolutely roasted it. Hope you like dongles, man. Buy something else. Headlines everywhere, one port, dongle hell begins, USB-C is a nightmare. People didn't hate USB-C, they just hated the idea of buying $200 worth of adapters just to plug anything in. Apple tried to delete every port overnight, but all they really deleted was our sanity. We didn't get minimalism, we got dongleism. But here's a twist, Apple accidentally accelerated the future. Dell switched, HP switched, Lenovo switched, Samsung switched, Nintendo switched, and almost every single Android phone moved over. Cameras, tablets, consoles, laptops, everything pivoted in just a few short years. USB-C went from why does this exist to why isn't this on every single device? And ironically, Apple was the last to put it on the iPhone. They kept lightning alive for an extra 11 years. It took EU regulation to finally pry it out of their hands. So here's where USB-C actually gets wild. USB-A had four pins, micro USB had five pins, but USB-C? USB-C has 24 and they're not even fixed. They rearrange themselves depending on what you need. 8K video, more display port lanes. Faster file transfers, high speed data lanes. It's a shape shifting Swiss army knife disguised as a connector. And before power even flows, USB-C negotiates. The devices that connect it literally talk to each other. How much power can you take? Who should supply what power? Are you a 60 watt cable? Are you a 240 watt cable? Do you support USB 4? Can you carry video? Are you an active or passive cable? But here's the part that confuses people the most. Not all USB-C cables are the same. Two cables can look identical on the outside, but inside they can be completely different. Cheaper cables typically carry only USB 2.0 data lanes and lower power wiring. Good enough to charge headphones or plug in your keyboard, but not much else. Higher end cables include multiple pairs of shielded high speed transfer lanes for USB 3, 4, Thunderbolt, or even DisplayPort. They use thicker copper to safely carry higher wattages, especially anything over 100 watts. So when people ask why doesn't every USB-C cable do everything, it's because inside the cable it's completely different. Same connector, but just totally different hardware. At the high end, USB-C is frankly ridiculous. It can deliver up to 240 watts under the USB-C power delivery 3.1 standard. It can hit up to 80 gigabits per second on USB 4 version 2 connections. It can push 8K video at 60 Hz through DisplayPort. It can even tunnel PCIe for external GPUs and SSDs. 
It can send power in both directions, and it can replace HDMI, DisplayPort, Ethernet, charging bricks, and audio jacks, depending on the cable in the device. Technically, you can buy one cable that supports everything that I just said and just call it a day, but most people don't need that unless you're a power user like me, charging 20 devices at once, moving terabytes of footage every week, and generally bullying my cables into early retirement. You can actually just save money. For most people, a cable that supports 100 watts and USB 3.0 data speeds is more than enough. Go charge most laptops, your phone, your accessories, and still transfer photos and videos without complaining at all. You can be pretty confident that no matter what you throw at it, that cable can handle pretty much everything without breaking a sweat. So the next time you connect a USB-C cable, just remember, you're not plugging in a port, you're waking up a 24-pin self-negotiating, shape-shifting super connector that helped end an entire decade of cable chaos. USB-C is one of the smartest ideas in modern electronics. Anyways, thanks for watching, and if you guys like this video and want to see more tech videos, feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.